Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, of course, Mr. Mokalover, and right now we need to talk about the insurgency. Reports continue to come in of attacks uh, by men of a rogue militant group led by the heinous, heinous, former Svetlovsk military junta leader Pavel Batov. As forces reportedly loyal to him have spontaneously led uprisings in several key cities against the rifle government. In Svedlosk and Tiomen, these rebels have succeeded in forcing out our local garrisons and have now proclaimed the Russian and National Salvation Commission from the HQ in Svedlosk. They've succeeded in identifying several key characters of the rebellion, among them Karbyshev's daughter, Yelena Karbysheva, a great betrayal, Ivan Bagramyan, Bagramyan, a prominent figure in subjugated Svedlosk, has reportedly joined the rebels along with Ernest Vaznesensky from Tiomen and Hamazasp Bad. Babadzidanian of Svedlosk. All evidence points towards these individuals working together and planning this. Pavel Patov is known for his skill in military organization and strategy, which explains the dangerous success of his movement in such a short time. His ability to manage Svedlosk for as long as he did is a testament to such abilities, and believe that without this competent head, the rebellion is doomed to fail, making him a key target. The traitor Yelena Karbysheva acts as the head of the interstate affairs and is already reaching out to our rivals for support and her close personal history with our former leader makes her especially dangerous as well. Ivan the Bagram, Bagramyan and Hazas Babadzadanian are both former Soviet generals who served in the first trial but now find themselves opposing us. We must act quickly to ensure that the early death of the rebellion. While they are weaker than us now, they have the advantage of fighting on the ground where the foolish population supports them, and unless we wipe, move to wipe them out, who knows how, how strong they will grow. Death to those who betray Russia's future. Well, crud. And American supplies arrive. A new shipment of, Ameri of weapons, ammo, clothing, medical supplies, and much more has arrived at our borders, supplied by the generosity of the CIA. So we can use these guns on our enemies, eventually on the Germans that destroyed our nation. These weapons have traveled over great oceans, through hostile territory, and horse-drawn wagons and slaves before arriving here, undoubtedly. This is only a fraction of what the Americans actually shipped us, as corrupt officials and bandits would have been paid off with some sort of bounty, but what we have received will be more than enough to equip some battalions with better weapons to continue to fight to reunite Russia. So, Operation ISD... Oh, oh boy, the traitors, uh, traitors Pavel Batov denies the cause, and has formed a devastatingly effective resistance to our authority over West Siberia. Failure to deal with him would be our downfall, long before any pretensions of the Great Trial could begin. Oh, boy. Yeah, we gotta go for that as fast as possible. So, we had done the State Development Directorate. A new SIB plan. Uh, that's not bad. For three years, our GDP growth will increase a little. Not bad. Research facilities will rapidly improve. I like that a lot. But I would like to see if there's anything in which we can get some more political power first. Um, it, as much as I want to do all this stuff here, and I would really love to get this research stuff. Oh, industrial expertise rapidly. Oh, everything gets better and better. Wow. Foundries of war. Okay. Let's do establishing a foothold because we need political power right now. The first step in a national reunification has been completed. The barriers to a control of Western Siberia and neighbor Kag Kaganovich's Mad Republic and his mutinous former allies in Svedlovsk have been invested by our forces. That's only the beginning, however. While we may have accomplished a nominal hold on the territories once held by our immediate enemies, they are far from secure. It's time we start solidifying our conquests and squashing and quashing any remaining dissent towards our administration and by extension our vision. The Glavkovic has demanded that our armed forces begin extending our system throughout our new territories, and they shall do just that. Uh, this will be a new test for us to ensure that our message is received by the masses outside of Omsk and its environs. Now, before we click on this, I'm going to let the thing go on, like the days go on for focuses, just so that we can get enough political power so we can do escalate ISC operations. The State Development Directorate. Do we run an economy most effectively or efficiently? One must model the economy after the command structure in a, of an army. Logistics must be maintained. Supply lines must be held. Quotas must be met. And appropriate people distributed according to their abilities. All must work as parts in the great war machine of our economy, and to oversee this, the State Department Directorate will use all appropriate measures to ensure efficiency. Industrial cadres must meet efficiency and work quotas. Farming cadres must produce enough to keep our soldiers on the front lines fed and our industrial workers running smoothly. Growth must be, must be maintained in all sectors according to the needed advances in production of all goods and supplies. All work must be subsumed under the banner of our eternal struggle. We will accomplish this through the same discipline and organization that, would be, that we would show if we were soldiers on the front. Though the men and women behind desks with typewriters may seem innocuous, they are vital secure in the future of Russia and should not be overlooked, nor can they be overlooked on their own duties. For to be a soldier in the Great Trial means many things, all for one. Couple comments. Uh, someone recommended, I think I said this in the last video, but I didn't address all the comments. Like, one of them was saying that I should play a Stricky sometime. I think I already said this, but they don't have a unique focus tree, so we'll get there eventually. Comments from yesterday's video, though, so I should play as Croatia. 
Well, at the time of this recording, I don't think Croatia has a unique Pokestry. And they're a sham kingdom right now, but... If they get a unique Pokestry, I'll play with them, definitely. Uh, someone recommends I play out the Himmler England version? You know. Um, I want... I really do want to play more England. They're not super high on the list since I have other plans already, but... England... People want me to play as Harold Wilson, I think, is it? Or... Macmillan? Macmillan and Harold Wilson and stuff like that, so... England will come again and again and again, so... I definitely have not stopped thinking about them, but they'll be on the channel eventually. Uh, let's see, why do I keep doing the decision that lowers stability earlier? That's just because I was very paranoid that if I didn't take that, I could get cooed. Because oh, usually I see Omsk like they lose, like there's like some sort of like chaos that happens, and I don't want that chaos. <laughs> I really don't like the chaos in our land, so I always took that, that lower stability just for like six more political power. Just because I thought it would be really bad for us, so if we didn't take it, so a lost connection, shall we? Or how about the uh, caffeine flow? Oh, if you want to read about Kathleen, this happens pretty much every time he plays a Russian warlord. If you'd like to read it, go right ahead. But a toast to our future successes. And actually, economy-wise, how is it looking? Not bad. Let's cut off the debt first, and because it's almost gone anyway. So, and escalate ISD operations. That would be a good thing to do. And the rest is using command power, which is actually pretty nice. A lost connection. Yezov watched the march pass as all commanders were expected to do. With all the efficiency of a gear turning against another, the contingents, another of the contingents, row by row, filed past him. He had long since grown weary of these formalities. Formalities. With every contingent that saluted him came another fifty to sixty men who weren't on duty against the menace. Another company lost to the pointlessness of display of an indulgence so Paul should almost escape no notice. The messenger hesitated by his ear, and Yezov started. Calming himself, he snapped. What is it? Be quick, I'm on duty. The doubt of Kabashev has been found. Yazov's uh, face froze. He whispered to his fellow general and bounded away from the procession. Where has she been found? I must know. She was the daughter of his mentor. She was that owed that much. One last kindness for the man he'd never say, said goodbye to, but how to tell her about her father. That he'd wandered off into the forest like an old boar looking for one last flight. Oh, his head spun so, but there's so much to do. A cold certainty began to slip into the, his gaze, and puzzle pieces fell together in his mind. You didn't find her. You found her handiwork. The messenger looked away, his fist clenched white. We have credible information so he's working with Batov, a people's popular something. Something died in Yazov's eyes. She turned into a disappointment, saying nothing. He walked, stalked back into his procession. At least there was one thing worth celebrating. Her father never lived to witness her disgrace. And let's go ahead and finally choose establishing foothold. Good. And now we're negative political power, but hey, we're actually losing political power. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is not great. We gotta get rid of this overextended administration too. As well as higher import instructors importing new industrial equipment. Political interference doesn't help. So, it is what it is. A tangible threat. Glakovark, Dmitry Yazov, was able to, rarely able to enjoy in time to himself. His indispensable duties <clears throat> to the safety and preservation of the motherland were all consuming, and although Yazov remained staunchly committed to his work to a degree someone considered unhealthy, even he understood the importance of the quiet moments. As he flipped through the pages of a fiction novel he had been working his way through the past few weeks, a rather vintage gramophone played old tunes from before the many tragedies that had befallen Russia. He wondered if there would be a place for such art in his new Russia. Before he could follow his line of thinking further, however, he felt the floor beneath him quiver and shake. The teacup on his desk, filled with piping hot liquid, began to vibrate intensely, and even his desk seemed to shift ever so slightly. As the window panes, too, began to rattle, Yazov felt his stomach tighten. He knew for well what kind of force it took to cause such a racket. The Glavkovic's suspicions were confirmed by a loud thump that once again shook the entire room. Rushing from his desk to peer out of the window, he was met with a large, distant plume of smoke rising against the evening sky. Omsk's vast industrial sector was in that same direction, and Yazov felt shock turned to anger as he began to connect the, connect the dots. With an explosion of that size, this was obviously no accident. The insurgents were getting more bold with their attacks, and they clearly weren't afraid to strike the very heart of the League. They've gone too far this time. And next up, let's see, securing the people. Ooh, that's not bad. More damage to garrisons, which I don't like. Reduces the administrative, administrative strain, though, which is something I really want. Uh, we're gonna hunt down the bandits. That's the most important thing in my mind that we gotta do. The perpetuous Pavel Batov, <clears throat> one of the key stakeholders in the former Sledovsk administration. I looted capture when we marched into the city. Since then, he, was, he has headed a group of so-called freedom fighters who seek to, su su to subvert our authority. These freedom fighters are little more than bandit rabble, no better than those who would steal from their own people. <clears throat> the defeat of these bandits are paramount to the extension of our authority throughout the rest of the Western Siberia. Luckily, our soldiers already have a sizable amount of experience in counterinsurgency operations. The Klaikovark and our high command has already put out a proposal together to ensure that we finish Batov and his followers quickly and efficiently. A combination of infiltration, raiding warfare, and show of force will grind these rebels into dust. 
More construction though. More construction. More construction. Holy crap. I like we're gonna we're going to build, build, build. Well, I guess maybe I should have done that yet, since we can't build anything yet. So, a chance to succeed. It was an unusually cold morning in Oms. Frost had formed in the windows overnight, obscuring the view of the outside world. He also considered opening the window to scrape it off and decided against it. He turned back to Petorovanov, only to find himself buried in the newest report on the production numbers. Yazov had skimmed the report earlier and it seems to contain mostly good news, though he had always called Petorovanov. To his office to confirm that. The economist, always a man of details, had been reading the report for almost an hour, leaving Yazov waiting for him to finish. And that time, Yazov had made himself a cup of coffee. Writing, written a memo for commanders of the command or combat cadres, briefly contemplated cleaning his window and made a list of captured partisans he wanted to be executed. Petrovinov cleared his throat and put down the report, finally finished with it. Yazov turned to hear what he had to say. <clears throat> Overall, this is very promising. Obviously, there's some inefficiency from the integrating the industry of reclaimed territories, but not as much as I anticipated. There are a few areas I'd like to tweak the production quotas, with your permission, of course, but all signs say we're heading in the right direction. You also grinned. P permission granted. The economist nodded, then turned to leave, but before we could go, Yazov called out to him. Evgen Evgeny, before, I, before you leave, can I ask you for your complete honesty? Petrovinov didn't even attempt to hide the confusion of his face. Of course, sir. What is it? Did you ever think we'd make it this far? The League, I mean. I suppose I never really thought about it. I just kept doing my duty, and this is where it has led me. Yazov chuckled. That makes sense. Recently, I've been thinking about how far we've come. It seems just like yesterday we were fighting tooth and nail to hold on to Omsk, and now here we are. Masters of Western Siberia and soon of all of Russia. We could not have done it without your leadership, sir. Thank you, Evgeny. I've done everything I can to save the motherland, and thankfully it seems that that has been enough so far. Can I tell you something that won't leave this room? Of course. I never thought we'd actually pull it off. Hmm. Oh, if we don't do this fast enough, we're going to get bad thingies. Well, we probably don't need to do this. I don't want to exert influence yet because it's not going to probably be easy against Zukov. Like, okay, he's got no manpower for now. He's up to 12 divisions. If I can fight him now, that would probably be the best thing to for us, but whatever. I would love to do this stuff, but we got to keep our political power, so yeah. It's all three of these things. I would like to get now more stability, which would definitely help us out. Um, I want to maybe try to save political power just in case we... I don't think we need it for this. So, a disappearing act. So, and instead, I'm not going to lower my stability again. Let's see. Construction speed's not bad. It's probably not really worth doing it like this. But I want to get out of our rut of stability, so... Disappearing act. Live... Lev Ivanov hated being so early to work. The old arms depot in Svedlovsk tended to be rather unnerving without any of his co-workers around with its claustrophobic concrete corridors and unreliable lighting. With it, uh, Lev couldn't just help feel as though someone or something was watching him as he made his way down to the storage unit to take stock. Arriving at the door to the small arms storage, Lev immediately discovered that the double door seemed to be stuck. He groaned and tried not to think about who might have jammed the door without even bothering to fix it. Placing all of his weight against the door, Lev strained as he attempted to shove the door open. No luck. Lev decided to change tactics, and perhaps, against his better judgment, started to ram his shoulder into the door. Surprisingly, his first attempt worked, and Lev found himself barreling through the two doors and diving for the concrete floor. Dissing himself off, Lev stood up to examine the seam. There was a weak plan plank of wood that now laid in twain across the floor, which appeared to have been wedged under the handles of the door. Behind him, however, was an even more confusing seam. The army was empty. Every crate, weapon, bullet was gone. In the far corner of the colossal room, he noticed the cargo bay doors were wide open. Although part of him was annoyed that he didn't think... To to use those to get in, Lev was far more concerned with what would happen to report this breach of security to the head of the cadre. Thieving rats! Oh no, that is not good. Oh, look how many guns we don't have now. 500... Oh, my apologies, something dropped on my desk. Uh, that artillery is not looking too good now, is it? Oof. No, thank you. That anti tank, not looking good either. Regardless. Writing down... Yeah... We got a raid in the mountain holdout. So there's quite a nuanced but forceful approach to quashing this revolt, which is beginning to res res resemble the greatest threat to a leak since Gauntlet. The rebels have moved westwards into a natural curtain of rock, metal, and crag. The Urals. This is, of course, only temporary frustration. Our troops, organized and well trained, will be able to flush them out eventually. The God Klovark has demanded that the Black League's high command present to him a path forward to dealing with Batov, and they have. The first phase is the infiltration of the rebels, and the second is the location and isolation of the mountain hideouts. Scattered throughout the Urals, they seem to have a makeshift line of communication. Cutting the off from one another and besieging each hideout on the mountains that they thought would be save them eventually would ensure an eventual victory. Good. On the hunt. Uh, oh, look at that. Wow. Pavel Batov has got a lot of... Oh, well, that's a lot. I'm glad we're going to lower authoritarian democracy. That's not good. Actually, okay, so it's not decreasing anymore for now, which is good. 
Okay, that's looking a little okay, not great, but on the hunt. The map of Western Siberia was a complex mess of pens, scribbled notes, circles drawn in red ink, and various stamps. The ISD had made great strides in the pacification of the area, but there remained one more major obstacle, Marshal Patov. His photograph was pined or pinned to the cork board, and the ISD headquarters generously perforated with pinholes. Beneath it were arrays of various photographs of other officers from Sverbosk. All were dead, their eyes crossed out, but not Patov. He's got to be somewhere in the forest, surely, said one officer, tapping the circled woods north of Sverdlovsk. It just makes sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> He'd get lost in it just as readily as anyone else, countered his junior. No, sir. I believe him to be in Zotelsk, possibly in the area of the capital. Hiding in plain sight works more often than you think, and it would give him ready access to stolen weapons. Wherever the treacherous marshal's hiding, he had to be found quickly. The bandits under his command were wrecking merry havoc. Patrols went missing. Bridges were blown up. Supply depots raided. They knew what they had to do when they found him. But doing so in the first place, that was a rub. Patov was no ordinary partisan leader, but one of the finest strategists in all of Russia. However, he was also still just a man, fine his weakness, and he would crumble in an instant. He won't make this easy. Alright, so, crap, we need more political power to do this. Now, I should not have lowered our stability earlier, because that hurts our political power game, which really, really sucks. But, ooh. Dragon's Lair. I would love to do some of this stuff. Um, well, this counterinsurgency progress is slightly higher. You get more command power. Ooh, 15. You go up by 20. Counterinsurgency progress by 10. Well, there's no point to do... Oh, we lose some guns. That's fine. Implement counterinsurgency propaganda. Oh, wow. There's a lot of lag on July 4th. Uh, or just... Give, mm, I'd, I'd rather make more guns then. Okay, why is there so much lag? What's going on? Is someone dying here? Hold on. What is going on? Eh, the Reichstag hasn't completely fallen apart. Or the gross Germanisches Reich. Oh my gosh. Octobi, though. Looks pretty nice. Alright, after that, erase their legacy. Uh, yeah, the conflict with Patov's troops may still be simmering, but that doesn't mean that we can't already begin to destroy their legacy. Pavel Patov and every single one of his bands will have their names stricken from history. Any mention of them will be akin to spreading seditious ideas, and carry the consequences for doing so. These so-called heroes are nothing more than a hindrance to the people, great Russian people in the preparation for the Great Trial. We will destroy them not just in body and spirit, but in memory as well. We will grind their legacy into dust, and in a few years' time, no one will remember their name, let alone the misdeeds of Pavel Patov and his soldiers. Into the mountains we shall go. Sneak, uh, peek, snap off a shot, and then scramble. Oh, don't meet your requirements. Oh, that sucks. Keep low, find what you cover. Find whatever you can. Close in, let the grenades fly. Keep your rifle and sidearm close. Don't stop for anything. Lather, rinse, repeat. So I went the ISD's constant drills. For those old enough to have served in the NKVD, it was an unexpected, ex an exceptionally challenging experience. They'd rarely been expected to engage in combat back in the days of the Union. Most of what they'd seen was anti-partisan warfare, which was technically... Which was technically, yeah, technically. Whereas decades ago they had faced off against indignant Polish and Baltic farmers again after the annexations, they now were up against one of the best soldiers of Russia, commanded by one of the best commanders in Russia. They had to be ready for Patov's men. They had to be. Every day he would live another was a was another dent in the legitimacy of the Black League. And they underestimated him. They made a mistake, lost their only chance. It was over. Twice practice twice as hard, battles twice as easy. Uh struck with him within uh, I definitely want to lower the administrative strain first though. Just because where is it? This insurgency hurts us. We lose political power. Hmm. Lessons from the gauntlet. Removes his strength. Ah, uh, we're gonna get this one first. Scaring the people. Despite the fact that before our most recent conquest, we had no small, amount, uh, sm no small amount of infiltrators in our rivals' administrations, the vast majority of our people are still unfamiliar with the ideals and inner workings of the Black League. Their education will come in time, and they will either fall in line or fall out of relevance. Until that happens, however, we have to work with a more reasonable framework. For now, we must find willing collaborators, ideological allies, or opportunists, and squash those who are unwilling to accept our victory. As we learn from the gauntlet, sometimes the greatest enemies are within. In every game, we will let those within our territory work against our vision, and as such, we cannot let any internal dissent simmer into a great fire of rebellion. Which we do get some political power and reduce administrative strain, which I think will be important to do. So. Not bad, not bad. And then after that, we're going to go with strike with the, from within. Patov's bandits are a little more than an obstacle and a greater goal. However, even the smallest cut can fester into a life-threatening infection. We must focus on the dealing with Batov and his followers as soon as possible. Unfortunately, they certainly haven't made it this easy for us. They hide in the hills, mountains, and forts outside the city. The raiders seem to act like a wave, attacking and then melting away the second they're threatened. If we can't beat them on the field, then we'll need to beat them where, where we can, from within. Our league has already significant experience in infiltrating closed-off organizations from wherever when we fought the Kaganevich's farcical state and the military remnants in Svedlovsk. We need to prepare for another invasion, though this one may be a little bit less orthodox. And we're going to continue expanding our budget, just because it gives us more political power. Cut this too. Cut that. 4.88. That's not great, but hey, that's better than 300 million it was earlier, so... And actually, look at that debt, or GDP growth. Not bad. 
Minus 0 0.03. That really sucks. Strike from within. Which would be good. And gives us more stability too, so. Uh, that doesn't help us with anything here. Not too worried about that then. And. There we go. Alright, so let's go finally do something here. Uh, I thought we would be able to do some of this stuff, but that's alright. Launch raids on holdouts. Lose manpower. And infantry equipment. Oh, by 30? Holy cow, that's a lot. What are we going to do here? So let's do that one. 30, that's not bad. Hey, minus 4%. The good news. Stepan Gage for the fifth day in a row in utter puzzlement at the uniformed men of the patrol has passed his house. They wore camouflage and black helmets rather than the cocky and green uh, uh, Marshal Batal soldiers. There was something about their manner, too, which he found disconcerting. Disconcerting. Batal's men had always chatted happily amongst themselves, stopping to talk with citizens or helping with minor tasks. These men appeared to regard Stepan and his neighbors as lesser people, not even looking their way unless it was delivered cold cruel ga glares. On the sixth day, he mustered his courage and stepped out into the street as the patrol approached. Excuse me. He called out, excuse me. The surgeon at the head of the patrol signaled for them to stop and he approached Stepan. Yes, citizen, something to report. Stepan shook his head nervously. No, sir, I was just wondering, who are you men? You aren't under Marshal Patel's command, are you? The patrol collectively glared, collectively glared at the citizen, uh, who suddenly felt as though he'd made a serious mistake. The surgeon's eyes narrowed because of your advanced age. I'll forgive your ignorance, comrade. We are the Black League. We are Russia. The tr traitor marshal has been driven from this place and you are under our rule now. Do not forget it. Patrol march. With that, they were gone. Polish boots hammering his tempo down the paved streets of Slodowsk. Stepan didn't quite understand, but whatever was happening, he didn't like it. He's not required to. Yep, we're done focusing on this stuff for now. Oh, okay. So I thought I said 28 days until we had to put down the bandits. I was getting a little worried there. Woof. Strike them from within, which is, which is good. So now let's have a little political power. Actually, right now we should be getting 0 0.04. At least we're positive. Erase their legacy, which we will do next. Yeah. Yeah, stricken from history. So that'd be good. Pavel who? That'd be nice to do. I just want to cut down the debt. The Polish Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, huh? Well, October, I think, won. So, then, yeah. There goes the Devogostat as well. The National Republic. The Kazakh National Republic. Huh, that's kind of, kind of wild, not gonna lie. I wonder when Kazakhstan is going to get their own unique focus suite. Kind of thing, weird thing to think about. Come on, a counterinsurgency need a counter insurgency needs to go up to fifty, get up to hundred as high as possible. Strike from within, and this should be done. There we go. There we go. Now we have no debt. How uh, we can invest in it as well? Uh, Yozov is a great economist. I swear, he's a tremendous economist. Now we shall do this too. And we should have some research done in twelve days, which is pretty good. All right. Up after this, new regional commissariats. Yeah, we'll go and do this one. Now that we've cleared away for our administration in the new territories, it's time for us to actually decide who will be governing these areas. The Kolvark has already prepared a detailed list of names for us to implement in these areas. <clears throat> Regional Commissariat, similar to what we had when we ruled just Oms and its hinterlands, will be appointed to these areas to begin extending the administrative side of our rule. Of course, many measures have been put in place to avoid the mistakes that led to the gauntlet. Each potential Regional Commissar will be vetted extremely thoroughly for ideological purity, potential connections to undesirable sectors of society, and their effectiveness in governing the the territories after they've been captured, or that they have captured. We cannot afford any further internal discourse that would serve to delay the Great Trial. Absolutely, 100%. And we're done with our land auction too. It's 66. Let's, I would love to keep doing this stuff and we need to, especially for resources, but I think it's time we maybe invest in better artillery. You know, that'd probably be good. At least we already maxed out our uh, land auction, which is really nice actually. All right, so anything else here? Infiltrate terror cells. Counterinsurgency goes up by 25. 20, 10. Oh, lose the army XP because we got enough of that for now. Counterinsurgency progress is at 50. Not bad. Not bad. And by doing this one, we get up to 25, so we get up to 75. Broken steel is greater than 75, greater than 75. Do these all have to be greater than 75? That sucks. Yeah. Operation Nightfall. Actually, how many days does that take? That might be good to know. Uh, 30 days, wow. We're, we're kind of on a tightrope here, but it's not that tight. Ah, we must erase our legacy, my friends. And reduce the strain on, on ourselves with this. I get slightly more political power. Not much. Ah, feels good, man. Feels good. 
Ah, Pavel who? There was no such man as Pavel Patov. No partisan leader of that name was tracked down and, el and eliminated by the uh, Internal Security Directorate. There was never a marshal of that name in the military of the rogue state Svetlovsk. Those portraits? Plaques in his honor? Nothing more than efforts by dissidents to mislead the good citizens of Russia. Creating composite photographs is rather simple when one has expertise in what reason could have one could one have for trusting a few scratch out words on a brass plate plaque. No books of military affairs were ever authored by a man of that name. He was a purely imaginative or imaginary figure. Concocted by bandits and traitors to legitimize their criminal activities, this Pavel Batov does not exist. He never did. Set this childish delusion aside and heed the command of the Glakovic, for Russia is more important things to worry about. Alright, so that's good. I'm going to actually get some planes as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's worth getting planes from the 1950s, you know, if you don't have anything else, so. An end to uh, frivolous luxury. And few men of Svedlos, capital, capitals of those who once opposed us. Rich statesmen reveled in their ivory towers and comfortable palaces while the most poorest of the poor froze and starved in the most basic of housing. <clears throat> And most put an end to this frivolous luxury practiced by the undesirable part of society. Their useless luxuries and distractions will not help us prepare for the great trial. They do not exact they do the exact opposite, softening our people to the realities of what must be done. The Black League and our operatives must have been ordered to perform a mass confiscate and repurpose a repurposed program, hunting down and confiscating anything that is not considered utilitarian in nature. This will be the first in many steps for integrating the people into our system and preparing them for the future that they must work within. I like an end to luxury, that's good stuff for us. Nice. So we've finished that. We're at 75. We've got to get a little bit higher. Uh, I'm going to max it out to try to get to 100. So we'll do this one. How many guns do we have in storage? None! Um, hmm. We need more infantry equipment. So maybe we'll just go with this one then. That's fine. That's fine. Anything else? Uh, in a month, we'll have a practical industrial administration from the 1950s. Not bad. Obviously, it could be a little better, but whatever. Ah, increase that GDP. We're barely increasing, but that's okay. And a society on uh, war footing. Eh, we lose ability. Lessons from the gauntlet. The gauntlet, that is, a test of strength that occurred following Co Comrade Karbyshev's death nearly destroyed our moment, our movement. Just, however, it was the turning point in our history. It solidified the power of our Glakovark, Dmitry Yazov, and allowed us to refine our vision and ideals going forward. However, the gauntlet also taught us many things about how our political structure should be built. Regional commissariats akin to the ones that we had when we were based only in Omsk will be retained, but those who will be put in charge of the commissariats will be vetted extremely thoroughly. They will be tested for loyalty, ideological purity, and the prop propensity towards corruption. If they fail any of these tests, only not only will they be rejected for the position, but their current station will be investigated as well. We must guard against the corruption and the cause of gauntlet. And I do want to apologize for my mispronunciation of words and such in this episode. My words have been very sloppy. Pronunciation has been very sloppy of, of me so far. Finally, we can do this. Uh, the task shall be purged. Smoke pit. Uh, I like all doing this. Ooh. Homecoming. Uh, let's do homecoming. I'm gonna do homecoming. There we go. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. 10, 15. Does that hurt us? Oh. Should I decrease by 20? Oh! Oh, that's not as good. Then, then we, I thought we our, our counterinsurgency progress would remain at 100. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. We gotta do that then. I'll uh, share your wealth. Give that back, you dudes. Hey, no, hey, get your hands off that. I paid good money for it. Zara slugged the merchant across the jaw, spitting his, splitting his lip. The well dressed man dropped to the pavement. Day, shut up. I'm, it's not your property anymore. These, he said, motioning to a bottle of expensive alcohol filling the back of the truck, are Class A luxury goods forbidden for civilian possession by directive of Glakovark Yazov. As such, they're hereby forfeit. The merchant scrambled to his feet and twitched like he was about to make a move, but then his arms dropped to his sides and his shoulders slumped. But that's my living you're taking, he whined. If I can't make a profit of those, I'll be ruined. Not my problem, Taras replied, crossing his arms behind him. His men lifted a crate after crate of vodka out of the truck, chatting openly amongst themselves about skimming a little off the top and how welcome the merchant's gifts were. The merchant could only stand there impotently. Nobody passing by even winced his way, or glanced his way. When the last of the vodka was stowed away in the patrol, patrol's APC, Taras stepped back and allowed the merchant to shuffle back after he handed it to his truck. Consider yourself lucky they weren't finding you too, called Taras after him. Have no fear, your products will go to a good cause, I assure you. Maintaining morale is a, is a good cause, right? I'm not going to touch that because it lowers our stability. I'm not touching that. This is really not good for us then. Counterinsurgency progress is greater than 75. Holy cow. I don't know if we'll be actually be able to do this then. Like, that's that's a ton of political power. Yeah, we had a bit, bunch earlier, but holy cow. That's a whole lot of political power that we don't have. Mm 
Hmm. Well, all right then. Interesting. Lessons from the Gauntlet. Well, let's do this too. The Committee of Internal Investigation. With expanded territory comes a large pool of manpower that we can draw into our military ranks, forming new units and commissioning new officers. The size of our army may well swell, but this is a double-edged sword. Many of our new recruits are unfamiliar with their doctrine at best, and absolutely unopposed, and opposed to it at worst. The military is the apparatus with which we will orchestrate our mission, and thus we cannot afford to have those disingenuous or invested in our cause being a part of it. We will form the Committee of Internal Investigation, which will be used to probe out any problems within the military ranks, from top to bottom. Not only will it sniff out and expose internal threats, but also encourage, officially or otherwise, behavior from all Volunteers of our armed forces to come forward and bring our attention to, to these threats. So at least we continue to reduce the administrative strength. Operation Homecoming. It has been long suspected that Pavel Patov, the treacherous leader of the insurgency plaguing the League, is hidden somewhere on the outskirts of Sledvosk. The city was a former HQ of the military clique that Patov belonged to, and even after it was reclaimed by the League, it remained a hotspot of terrorism and sabotage. Local garrisons struggled to pass by the region around the city, and recently reported there was a serious risk of being forced to abandon their positions in the face of escalating attacks if they were not reinforced. In response, a full division was ordered to the city to destroy the rebellion once and for all. Word of their impending arrival reached the city before they did, and all the local rebels launched a full rebellion. By the time the divisions arrived, the city devolved into a war zone, and the local garrison was besieged inside City Hall and the fortified barracks. With no possibility of a sudden citywide sweep that would catch the rebels off guard, the division commander adopted a new strategy. Combat squads entered the city ready to clear it out house by house. Intense street fighting quickly enveloped Svedlosk, but the uprising had been hastily organized and was be began abruptly before the rebels were organized. There was no match for the disciplined forces of the Black League, and by the end of the first day, most of the garrison had been relieved, and the city center was secure. It took several more days before the outskirts were recaptured, but by that time, most of the partisans were on the run, their loyalty to the officers vanishing as soon as they realized that they were losing. No sign was found of Batov, though a hidden command post that may have stayed in was uncovered. The city suffered significant damage during the fighting, but with the rebels forced out, restoring order should be an easier task than before. The only way to guarantee obedience is with fear. So it helps us with more, with more stability, which is good, but memories of the gauntlet. Perhaps it was ironic that in the moments of greatest self-questioning and security, Yazov always thought back to one of the most des desperate, paralyzed moments. The gauntlet, as it came to be known, when Yazov's fragile inheritance had been thrown into his face. The moment was crystallized in his mind, sitting there at his desk, gunshots echoing off concrete. Hot panic in his mind as an animal impulse to seize his heart. How he had been felt paralyzed, every idea of bringing forth ten counter-arguments and a hundred more nightmare scenarios. But wasn't that this panic that brought him back to his, this place time and time again? It's about how he had pulled himself out of it, against his every instinct and impulse, slowly at first, forcing himself to follow through on his own decisions, swatting away doubt and putting faith in himself. And though he did not feel destiny's winds at his back, he knew that he had to press on to success or failure. There's no path forward, there's no path but forward. An important lesson? Ultra nationalism? Good. Uh, that should help us out with getting slightly more uh, political power because of the popularity of our thing, right? Popularity of our people thingy. Hopefully. Can we just pay them to leave? Hmm. <laughs> if only. Uh, if this is the case, we're doing this. Go and do this as well. And then boom, 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 boom. And then boom, 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 boom. Not a lot of territory here in West Siberia, but that's alright. God, I hope we can actually do this. Because this is a bit extreme. Do we... I don't agree with this. Our counterinsurgency progress is greater than 75. Just because if we lower their strength, that should lower the amount of counterinsurgency progress that we need. But we'll see what happens. A society on war footing. It's not enough to posture to the people that we wish to defeat the Germans and visit upon them the suffering that they brought upon us. We need to be ready. It's not enough for us to operate as another nation, as other nations do. Our mission requires us to be constantly producing and overproducing wartime material. Everything from guns to rations need to be in vast supply. We will not be caught unprepared again. We shall prepare Russia to be ready for war at any moment. We shall complete this preparation by creating a highly, highly militarized society in which our military production is prioritized. Our people live highly regimented lives and organizing units dedicated to specific tasks. Those who refuse to work within the system shall work outside of it in industries in which potential sabotage is of no concern. Okay. Artillery? Internal affairs? Good. At least we got better artillery now. Even though that's going to take some time to make, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Our infantry... Get some better guns, finally. All this housekeeping before we can do else other stuff. Let's get a point two every day. Uh, 30. Yeah, the next time we have a focus, I'm just going to let it go on because we need to do some more stuff here. Launch raids on holdouts. That would not be bad to do. We're about halfway there, but we're getting much more political power, so I'm just going to close this so I don't get tempted. And internal affairs. You stand before the Committee of Internal Investigation today, said one of the men seated at the large wooden desk across from where Trophim. Oh, yeah, Trophim stood. Each member of the committee appeared so uncaring and stone-faced that they could just as easily have been made out of wax. Do not be afraid, Trophim, said one of the other committee members. Fear wastes time. Listen, uh, comrades, I swear upon Russia and the great trial itself that I've been completely loyal to the cause. I've done nothing that 
You are accused of wasting resources, Trophium. Don't lecture us about loyalty, said the first committee man. One of your subordinates has reported that you are a wasteful commander, and after reading the reports, they are correct. You lose approximately 24% more soldiers in combat than the other squad leaders of your rank and station, and yet your accomplishments to go along with the casualties are of no greater than the others. If you have evidence of your competence, speak it now. Well, those numbers are skewed. We ordered to we were ordered to charge a machine gun nest and recently lost half of our team. It was no fault of mine. If it was no fault of yours, then your subordinate would not have reported you. My vote is guilty, said the third judge. Seconded, said the first, then we then we are unanimous. Pronounce the second. The Black League would not tolerate wasteful use of resources, even if it's lies. Wow. Good. Twenty? Okay, so this goes up by thirty. We lose some guns and manpower. But this is way too much political power for us to really want to use this. Twenty? I'd prefer thirty. Let's go as high as we possibly can right now. Oh, the Committee for the People's Liberation of Russia. For the People's Russia. Oh, okay. Okay, so they fi Wow. They finally unified. Holy cow. That's a little crazy. Oh, we actually have 18 divisions. Did you know, did you know that? I forgot to even look at this. And actually, let's see. You guys are not going to do that. No wonder we never have any, uh, never enough guns. All right, so that's the case. We're going to pop these numbers up some more. Uh, go down to three then. I don't want to lower it by too much. Blank cast is looking good. Fives are looking good. Yeah, that's not bad, I'd say. All right, so actually, before we do that, we got quite a while before we do that. The three theses. <clears throat> you shall learn and memorize these three theses as they've been passed down to us from the Klakovic himself. One, the great trial is inevitable. Two, Russia will be destroyed by the great trial if it is not prepared. Three, the Black League is the only organization capable of preparing Russia for the great trial. Learn these things and learn them well, or learn these theses. Know them to be true. The salvation of our people and revenge against the Germans are contingent on these few words. And happy 1967. We're pushing pretty quickly through this campaign, I'd say. It feels a little bit faster than anything. some of the other, you know, warlords. Or maybe I'm just more experienced with the Russian warlord era. Or maybe just Omsk itself, or the West Siberian Provisional Authority. So, maybe it's just that. Could be wrong, but you never know. I love having no debt. I can't say that in real life, though, man. I cannot say that in real life. Oh, man. Ah. Six days left, that's fine. And then after that, for the good of Russia... We get less political power? No, 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 no. The Great Trial above all. That's not bad. The duty of the Black League... Yeah, that's the one. So, every member of the Black League, from the Glakovark to the newest inductee, has a nice secret duty to prepare themselves, others, and the nation for the Great Trial. The Great Trial is inevitable. <clears throat> and it seems like every day it edges closer and closer. Every member of the League needs to be made aware of the duty that they have, the duty that they are expected to carry out, and to the end of their lives if need be. We're the only organization well-equipped and aware of the impending conflict to prepare the nation for the upcoming trial. The duty of every member, high and low, new or old, is to prepare them and avenge the crimes of the Germans. And everyone must be made aware of this. Like an oncoming storm filled with a torrential downpour, Russia will be will be this through the Teuton. The duty of the League and our members demands it. Alright, so we're at 60, which is not great. Well, let's get up to 85, which would be great to do. We're really running out of time, which I really don't like. So, how about this? Okay, so, to do this, the insurgency strength has to be less than 25. We'll be assassinated and insurgency crushed. So, if we can get, is there anything here that removes insurgency stuff? 20, 20, 20. Wow, that's not good. 20, 20, 26, 20. So, if we do three of these, well, actually, we have to do all three. Ooh, we're going to be cutting it really tight then. Ooh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it. Ooh, I might have to actually do some stuff off screen to make sure that does a. That I might actually replay some of this stuff just so that we can make sure we get it done. Duty of the Black League. Very good. Uh, the three theses. Ideologies the instructor pronounced in a sharp practice tone as he turned to face the classroom are weak. It's important that you, as officer candidates, understand that a uh, just cause did not win wars. If this was the case, then Germany would surely have been defeated in the last war, but instead they won. Not because of some mythical racial heritage, but because their armed forces were the strongest. It is for this reason that we will not teach you ideals, but simply the observable facts upon which we base our actions. Our entire program of national salvation is founded upon a set of three tautological theses, in which we have condensed the whole of Dmitry Karbyshev's geostrategic thought. The first, Karabysheviat thesis. The great trial is inevitable. It is impossible to know the true intentions of nation-states, and thus conflict between them is inevitable. And so our present tripolar arrangement is bound to collapse eventually into a global conflict in the form of the great trial, which Russia at its geographical center. The second thesis. If Russia is not prepared for the, for the trial, our civilization will be obliterated. To prove this, one must not only look at the weapons of modern war, the next war will be total, beyond any concept of totality. Eventually, nuclear weapons will be used, which, if not prepared to face them, will lead to annihilation. The instructor took a deep breath before launching into his peroration. 
peroration. The tone of his voice now becoming that of a fiery preacher, and at last, the third thesis, the synthesis, as the only organization which has recognized this geopolitical inevitability, and the only one which is actually prepared to face it, the Black League is Russia's sole hope for survival. We will fortify our position, and once the guns fall silent, we will emerge from beneath the earth to take that back that which is ours, and exact our vengeance upon the Germans. A fine performance. Very, very good. And it looks like we got a lot of things we could do down here, but I don't think we'll probably take them, because it doesn't make sense for us, too. I'm just worried about this. Uh, not good. Yeah, but like I said, we'll see what happens. At least the GDP is doing okay. Future... F uh, what's after this? Ooh. Uh, you do get slightly more political power. Reduces the current administrative strain. You'll lose even more political power, which I really do not want. Oh, what's going on over here? Oh, good. So, insurgency strength is 80%. Well, we gotta do this immediately. And then we're going to do whatever it costs to get this. 20. Why would we do this? Like, that costs so much political power. That'd be such a waste. That one's better to do, so. 10, which is not good. Ooh. We're about 200 days out. I'm not going to do any of this yet. we got to keep our PP. Alright, so after this, uh, how much PP are we getting? 0.28. I don't mind getting that one. This one's not great. I want to continue reducing our administrative strain, which currently is what? Uh, gulags, of course, are nice. 7%. Eh, minus 7%. Stability. Oh. Uh, well, this is a great trial, blah, blah. Our duties have greatly expanded following our triumph over the rivals to the immediate west. A larger territory means more people to control, more industry to manage, and more bandits to eliminate. Committees and subdivisions of the League will be created to account for these, and new members will be inducted into the League as necessary. However, these things, while necessary to ensure that our continued existence in the face of adversity that we face, should not distract us from the purpose of the Black League and every single member with within. The preparation of Russia and her people of the Great Trial. Bunkers will be expanded, military and industries built up. The barracks and the unit system will be extended to every corner of our authority, and all will participate in making the ready our nation for the great, great trial. Keep spending that stuff. There you go. And yep, nothing there yet, which is fine. Actually, these divisions that we're making. What type of divisions? Chiana Gardens? Oh, and I did make edit a division to be 40 combat with as well, eventually. Once we get there, so. We're not quite there yet, but we're making these divisions, not not these guys, which is good. Alright. So not bad. Not bad. It's looking slightly better for us since we can do two at the same time, basically, but for the future of Russia. All loyal citizens must donate any materials that they can to the war effort. You will be required to make a donation of at least one pound of metal. This can be iron, aluminum, steel, or other such useful material. Come out of your homes immediately and report to the town center with your items for a donation. The truck with the loudspeaker kept trunding past barely standing ramshackle houses and towards the church. As soon as it arrived, the officer driving was presented with a quite a scene. A soldier pointing his rifle, bayonet fixed, at a priest holding out his cross. They were conversing rather tersely with each other. The people here have been ushered from cradle to grave by this bell, and you shall not have it. I cannot allow it even in my life. The speak this priest spoke with a religious fervor, but the rifle man was adamant, as he should be. The officer walked up slowly, not bothered up unholster his pistol. The Black League requires this material for our war effort. We will dismantle it, whether you like it or not. Over my dead body, replied the priest. If that is necessary, I do not believe that it will be. The officer motioned for the men to climb the tower. The priest blocked the door with his arms. The men held up the rifles. Would they shoot? No. The officer took, looked at the priest, looked at the men, and then grabbed the priest by the scoff of the neck and threw him the, into the mud. Proceeded. Or proceed. And do not delay li like this with the rest of the collections. We move to the next town by sundown. The history of Russia melted away. Ah, get some more support equipment. Great, we can use that. Good. Good, 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 good. Uh, I don't want to do the 51. That's so much. 50. That goes 20. I think we, uh, we have to do it, though. I don't want to... I hate doing that, but that's okay. We might actually be able to make it in time, though. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, how's the building? It's going pretty nice, I'd say. And for the good of Russia. Just like we only really control the city of Omsk and its environs. It's time to extend to the rest of the territory we control the policy that the Black League shall be the only organization allowed to illegally operate. <clears throat> of course. The administrative needs of the new territories are much larger than they were before, and thus we have to account for that. The League will be divided into several other directorates and subdirectorates that will oversee various administrative, judicial, and economic matters. Each of these new divisions will be assigned at a number of tasks with the ultimate goal that they will be able to extend our authority to even the most remote locations for the good of the League and the preparations of our people. Which is, of course, a good thing. Escalate. <clears throat> 
Operation Broken Seal. Tumem, once the capital of the Siberian People's Republic, is now the home of one of the most active branches of Batal's insurgent movement against the Black League. Paranoia has gripped the city with rumors of partisan infiltration and disloyalty within the government spreading like wildfire. It assumes everyone from the mayor to the custodian who sweeps his office is under suspicion, and there's no way of knowing who can be trusted. That is until a month ago when our partisan commander, Shadrinsk, wasn't qu quickly enough with her Sinai pill and fell into the hands of our interrogators. She held out for a remarkably long time, but everyone eventually cracks. She provided a list of names that, while not comprehensive, gave the garrison of Tiumen something real to work from. Soon a few officials from the mayor's office simply vanished without any explanation. These men did not provide any information of use, but their disappearances caused a panic among the partisans. All it took was a few days of observation to find which government employees were sweating under the pressure, and then placing some tails on them to find out what they had to hide. Soon the director of state security had a list of dozens of names, and the pur real purge could begin. Now, the terrorists were running scared. Most of the leaders have been arrested or dis disappeared without a trace. With the local leadership exposed, the foot soldiers are running for the hills. All their grandiose plans for uh, an uprising now nothing more than their dreams. Order has been restored to two men, and a major blow has been dealt to Patal's criminal organization. Surprisingly, the mayor had no involvement whatsoever. The cowards run because they know they cannot hide. I got even more stability. Ah, oh, it's feeling better. I'm feeling better about this, guys. Hope you guys are as well. Whew. Even though our factory's not looking good. How is Zukov doing? That's a cool flag, though. Zukov, well, he's probably got more manpower now. Uh, more divisions. He's got actually more divisions than us, which is kind of alarming. Way more manpower. Wow. But we're pretty equal in terms of industry. All right. For the good of Russia. And uh, I've got a while for that, too. A great tribe above all. <clears throat> Dmitri had found the tattered old page in a gutter in a small town. It transfixed him for some reason. The confident face of the soldier skewered the wicked German on his bayonet. It was a feeling of power and purpose. He wanted to be the soldier, the big man of the house, the one who would save his family and his people. He did not know where his family was at the moment, but he only got on by scraps of bread or anything else he could steal, but his poster promised him something more. The great trial, all must serve. All meant him. It meant that he was wanted, needed by his nation to fight for the right. He wanted to be part of the new family. How desperately did he want to join the League officially, He'd be assigned into one of those wonderful cadres, a brother to seal, ready to fight for the nation to, and die if necessary. He resolved to get the next official that came by to get him official membership. Until then, the poster would hang in his corner of, his, of the back alley behind the workshop. He would sit and look it up, look at up at it. Every day, the soldier, his prey, the soldier, his helmet, the soldier, his rifle. He began to pray as he'd been taught very briefly. He prayed for what he wanted to be the soldier in the great trial. All must serve. Wow. We got 5% more war support, but it didn't help us at all. Wait, war heroes being killed. Service by requirement, no health care, uh, great poverty rate. Actually, how's poverty doing it for us? Oh, that's actually going up. So it's no longer stagnating, which is a great thing. Our professionalism is rapidly increasing too, which is a good thing too. Anything here? Two days and good. We got to go for whatever we can get, grab our hands on. So, and let's see. Uh, that's okay. Really good at Russia. The program of national action. This is going to cost more, but I think it'll be worth it. <clears throat> the internal security director has already proven to be an invaluable asset during the dark days of the gauntlet. However, the new expanse of our territory and the troubling or trouble that is assimilating it has already been felt. Unfortunately, the previous structure of the director has shown itself not to be as effective as we'd hoped. Thus, we will begin expanding the directorate and expand not only its powers, but its acting authority. This will ensure that the internal threats, such as dissidents or bandits, are eliminated and the League's ideals are still being held up, even in the most remote parts of the territory that we have earned for ourselves. Always got to keep an eye on this. Hmm. Four days left, huh? Oh, active for seven days. That actually is not too bad then. Ah, good. Industrial robots. All right, so here we go. Industrial. This one, the one on the right is better because cap is not worth it. Growth is fine. We get more max factors from this one too, so that's actually really, really, really important in my opinion. Can't believe it's in 1967 though. Oof. Here we go. Launch raids. Because, oh wow, that actually goes up to 30. 30 more? Nice. For the good of Russia, my friends. The watchful eye of the director. Next. Uh, 11 days. That's not bad. Anything else over here? Nope. All right, then. Cool. Let's read the next focus, then. The national, the program of national action. The Kalkovar has passed down what he calls the program of national action. A five-fold program that comprehensively summarizes the way that our reclamation authority shall operate now that we've dealt with our immediate rivals. First, we must emphasize national survival. The preservation of order and stability in Russia. Secondly, we must begin a national reconstruction to set our movement up as a true rival to the Teuton and other Russian states who refuse to see the truth. Thirdly, we need to perform a national purification to systematically separate the wheat like the, from the chaff and discard from our ranks in society that the non-believers and troublemakers. Fourthly, we must begin a program of national reclamation to exert our authority over all of Russia. Fifth and finally, we must begin national vengeance. The true trial will be a total war and a near apocalyptic endeavor. This program of national action is a clear path forward on how to best prepare for people for it. 
lose some more po uh, political power, but it reduces, uh, removes the current administrative strain. So it kind of cancels itself out, so that's not too bad. Hopefully. Ah, let's get some better jet fighters, because those will be important against the evils of Zhenozukov. And we're still training, huh? We're all training these guys, which would not be bad. We're really out of guns. Ah, it's actually better than... Minus 16, 1600 is not bad. And there goes Wales. Goodbye, Wales. Goodbye. Have a good day. Five days left. Yazafu's authoritarian socialism. A little bit of lag. Probably Wales died. Yep, they died fast. Uh, Badenov. Nebogotov, uh, but Pavel Patov, of course, and Alexiev, Alexiev, yeah, Alexiev. Cool. Program the national action. So now we get point two four. It is what it is. The director sees all. The two intelligence officers sat next in a van close to or close by to the blocky. Uh, excuse me, smoke pit. Thank you. Blocky apartment. They had no extra rations to eat and no more cigarettes. So those have been disappeared after the first two hours. Now they sat here doing nothing but listening, listening through their oversized headphones to the bug under the former colonel's table. This was the third day they had been struck, stuck here, essentially doing nothing. But supposedly this man had information on a secret project he had been working on for almost a year before the Black League had taken over here. The only records they could find were of a top secret special device that, when used, could incapacitate a man up to. 30 minutes without him realizing a thing. Its code name was Katya. Naturally, such a device was of great interest to the internal security directorate, and so they've been staked out here. The officer's ear perked up when they heard the doors open. They listened more closely, hearing that the, each creak in the floorboards. There you are, my dear Katya. It's so cold out there, I don't know how I could get warm. The two officers looked at each other. One slammed their headphones down on the table. You've got to be kidding me. Remember top secret, my dear Katya. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, 25 would be great. 20, 25. Alright, so we need 30 days for this, and then 7 days, so basically we need 30, I'd say be comfortable with 38 days, so we might just get this done. So, Operation Smoke Pit. The city of Chilabinsk had become a hotbed of resistance to the Black League in recent months. The efforts of Batal's terrorists have turned the city into a miniature war zone, with frequent bombings and hit-and-run ambushes against the city's garrison. Increasing the number of soldiers present in the city has only resulted in a rise of attacks against them. To prevent the situation from devolving further into chaos, it was decided that a new approach should be tried. Intelligence officers and secret police have spent the last weeks infiltrating terrorist cells throughout the city, locating their safe houses, and warning of planned attacks. These agents have uncovered a network of partisans that extends across the whole city and even surrounding villages. When the terror organization lay bare, a more permanent solution was now available. This afternoon, the spies' work bore fruit. As the rebels prepared for a series of coordinated strikes, the units were suddenly ambushed by well-concealed soldiers of the city's garrison. By the time the partisans realized their cover had been blown, it was too late. Dozens of partisan soldiers were killed in the first wave of counter-ambushes, and before the commanders could mount an effective response, they found their safe, safe houses had been exposed. Combat cottages across the city dragged hundreds of terrorists out of their safe rooms and bolt holes. A few surrendered, but most were fought to the death. Most fought to the death. By the day's end, the tally was 254 dead terrorists, including every member of the Chelyabinsk Partisan Command, 133 in custody, and 13 dead League soldiers. The spine of the resistance in Chelyabinsk has been broken. Those terrorists who remain free will either submit to it, or submit to the inevitable, or continue their doomed struggle. Without the commanders to guide their treachery, it will not be long before we catch them. The hunters become the hunted. Very, very good. Still 18 divisions. Not bad. Not great. 60 factories. Could use more, though. Could definitely use more. And actually, look at that. Even though we're trying our best, we have minus minus seventy five percent construction speed. Holy cow! Woo! That is a lot. But a quiet rage. Dmitry Timoveyevich, Glyazov, Klokovar got the Black League and Paramount figure in the Reclamation Authority. As a perfect. You know, per Perfect personification of the Black League and its ideals. His fury at the injustices that have been come upon Russia know no bounds, and is directed westwards towards the German and the perpetrator of the, just, of the injustices. However, this fury and unbridled rage is contained, measured, and directed. Like the Black League itself, Yazov hatred for the German and his belief in their destruction tempers his actions and his motivations. The League is a result of this directed rage, molded by the Klokovic's ideas and emotions. It is cold and, and efficient, but this is but a well-constructed mask for the hatred it is based in. It is a personified is best personified by a trio of words, a quiet rage. You'll get more political power, good. And then we can maybe... Oh, actually, we'll probably go to war with these guys, too, if we really wanted to. Um, the program of national action is good to read about. We just need more political power now. Comrades of the Black League. We all call upon all members of a program of national action. First, to ensure the continued existence of the Russian people. We must work towards instilling in people in the land the strength to repel all enemies. Second, to ensure the unity required to prevent the same traitorous breakups of the critically weakened Russia in the first trial, we must destroy warlordism and ensure the sameness of political thought. Third, to ensure that the Russian people or nation, unify, nation is unified as much such, we must eliminate foreign influences and make sure that those who betray our nation face appropriate justice. Fourth, to ensure that all Russian people can be unified as such, we must reclaim the lost lands containing our Russian comrades. Fifth, to ensure that the world knows of the cost of destruction that Germany has wrecked upon Russia and the power of Russian vengeance, we must avenge our homeland against the vile Germans and the government. 
The more simply Vasily read, the more he agreed. These are simple goals, simply put, that would restore Russia's place in the world. Perhaps the league wouldn't wasn't quite as bad as he had been told. Sure, the uniforms were intimidating, and some of the more rumors must be true. But for such a goal, Vasily had seen the dead and watched the destruction in the West Russian War. He had even seen the breakup of the last Russian, the last time Russia was powerful. Strength, unity, power. These were necessary requisites for a stable nation in the world such as this. And if the costs were high, he had been willing to lay down his life in the last word to protect his nation and his family. There couldn't be anything more than that he wouldn't be willing to give. Perhaps then it was time to take up arms again if their league would have him. It's all come down to the simple prices. Do not forget. Do not forgive. And we march together in unity. Oh, wow, we got debt. Oh, that's not good. So, we got a quiet rage going, which is nice. But, oh, look at this. 15, we need 20. Uh, yeah, we must go with 20. I don't want to lose any more guns, though. That's only 10. We need to get up to above 75, so that's going to be important to do. So, 14 days. We're cutting this very close. Oh, I don't like this. A quiet rage, so we can exert influence, which we're not ready for war. I don't want to go to war yet with those guys down there, so we'll see what happens. The Russian National Army... Oh, ceiling so budget boost. Let's go ahead and do that too. And since we're here, do that too. Nice. Oh, we actually have a deficit now. That's not good. Oof. Uh, is it because we made more divisions? No, it's not because of that. All right. Anywhere else we can get more political power for a ministry abroad? Um, that's not bad. Message to Berlin. Foundations laid. Anything else? I might just do the economy stuff or industry stuff. Start the illegal program. No, nothing really there. A new SIP plan. Well, research and development initiatives. Uh, we'll see. Oh, before we do that, though, infiltrate the Dragon's Lair. Yes, that'd be very, very important. And to do this, we need to continue doing this. Ooh, that is not good. Hopefully, get more political power, though. Devel research and development initiatives. Actually, mm hmm, hmm. Because we have 15 days for this, increase of this. You know, I'm going to risk it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do my focuses yet, then. Okay, now we will, because we have not political power, which is good. Oh, okay. Whew. Once, Russia was a center of innovation and scientific discovery. The Germans took that from us when they invaded, killing so many of our brightest minds and stealing our centers of innovation. The rest of the world has raced onto the 20th... Raced on into the 20th century, leaving Russia fighting to catch up. The scientists and engineers of the Black League have struggled mightily, but they have had to work without dated equipment, limited resources, and insufficient funding. This stops now. Russia's reclamation and the great trial lies beyond that. It cannot be won if we have to fight them with the weapons of the first trial. The League will immediately devote much more funding to expanding and modernizing the research facilities we control. Scientific personnel and resources that we acquired during the first phase of the reclamation will be reorganized into the new research teams without, with the designated goals. Everything from chemical fertilizers to the construction materials will be developed. Of course, the focus will be on new, modern weapons for the brave soldiers of the League. Get a little bit more depth, but that's alright for now. That's totally fine. A quiet rage. Yazov stared at the map spread across the table in front of him. It depicted the Black League's best understanding of the current situation in Russia. To the east and west, the other contenders for control of Russia were splayed across the landscape, representing how far the League still had to go. To the south, the states of the southern Urals continued to persist despite all odds, waiting to be swallowed by one of the humans around them. In the middle of it was the West Siberian Provisional Authority, a bastion in order and duty surrounded by treachery. Optimism was a luxury Yazov did not afford himself, but some part of him had hoped that, that once Western Siberia was unified, the road to unification would be easy. Instead, the League had been forced to grapple with the rebellions in dissent. Rebuilding Russia, Russian society to be ready for the Great Trial had been time-consuming, but necessary. While the Black League was working to pull its portion of Russia out of the darkness and prepare for the storm that was coming, the warlords around him had expanded their territory and consolidated their hold over the vast stretches of the motherland. Dislodging them would not be easy. Yuzov took solace in the strength of the League. In less than a decade, it had grown from a corrupt and disorganized organization confined into a single city, into a colossus ready to reunite the nation and bring justice to those who had wronged the Russian people. The armies of the League could not be stopped even by the mightiest opponents. Soon, the time would, for national reunification would come, and the Black Tide would sweep across Russia, wiping away the weaknesses and degeneracy that had invested in it for too long. It would not be a joyful event. It was the League's grim response to rebuild the motherland and punish those who weakened her. Yuzov knew there would be not the time for celebrating once Russia was whole again. He would have to make do with the satisfaction of knowing that traitors were all dead, and the final confrontation with the true enemy in the West could begin at last. A silent storm approaches. Very good. Man, we are cutting this extremely closely. 20, ooh, we actually might not be able to get it done then. Oh, wait, no, 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 hold on. All we have to do is this one left, and that's seven days. Because this takes a total of 20 more days, which is not good. Ooh, we still not be, might not be able to get it done, because 15 days. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, we have a little bit of debt too, so. Which is not good. 15. Once we get this one done, 
We'll go to 35. Uh, less than insurgency strength has to be less than 25, which is... Uh, actually, that's not bad. But our strength has to be as of 75. I don't think we'll be actually be able to complete this. Oh, crap. That's not good. That's so stupid. That is beyond stupid, I think. Honestly, if it's already at 40, you need to have to go a little bit lower than that. But research and development initiatives. Research Kameta. Uh, that's not bad. The Black Budget. And the New Civ Plan. Bo Boharin's Soviet Union was a weak nation that failed to defend Russia, but it did produce some good ideas in its, in its short existence. One of these was the Siberian Plan, the Civ Plan for short, an ambitious program to industrialize Siberia both to enrich and impoverish east of Russia and to create an industrial base for, far from any invaders. Unfortunately, most of the development took place east of our current territory, while projects in western Siberia floundered. Chief Economic Minister Evgeny Petronovov has drafted a new SIP plan, one which takes into account both our limited resources and their new goals. The industry of the trans Ural region will be fully centralized under the state and expanded to meet the needs of the Black League. Industrial projects will be focused on aiding the military and preparing our new economy for the Great Trial. Everything from new aircraft production to fuel distribution to be optimized and perfected. There can only be no wasted resources, no gaps of inefficiency within our industry. The Black League's goal is nothing less than Russia's salvation, and we must remake the economy to serve that goal alone. Alright, we're at 35. I mean, going up all the way up to 75 is a bit extreme. But Operation Dragon's Lair. After weeks of preparation, the crackdown of the insurgents within the Zlatas had begun. In the pre-dawn hours this morning, hundreds of officers from the Director of State Security descended upon the city, backed by several battalions of infantry. The officers went door-to-door -door arresting anyone suspected of working for the so-called Russian National Salvation Communist. The main targets were the local leaders of the insurgency, especially among those who were operating from within the city government itself. Most of the suspects were caught off guard and apprehended without incident. A few attempted to run, but were quickly, quickly caught or gunned down. Others chose to take their own life rather than surrender, saving the director the trouble of dealing with them. By the time the sun was up, hundreds were established, or hundreds were behind bars, dozens were dead, and most of the city had been secured. A few of the rebel leaders got word of what was happening and attempted to make their escape, realizing the city was surrounded. They rallied their supporters and three dozen men and women in total and took the control of the warehouse on the edge of the Zatals. The staff of the warehouse were taken hostage, and the rebels used the weapons and materials to stockpile within to fortify their position. The 29th League Infantry Battalion surrendered the warehouse, and cutting off all means of escape, but was instructed not to storm the position to avoid unnecessary casualties. What resulted was a multi-hour standoff that lasted into the evening. Eventually, it was decided that the warehouse and its contents were expendable, and an airstrike destroyed the building and everyone inside of it. The city is now firmly under our control once more. It is not wise of them to test our patience. And, man, this is getting close. Greater than 75. Well, there's nothing I can do. 75. Hmm. Hopefully, another one pops up here. Better AKs, or better infantry equipment is good. Uh, let's grab better trucks. Top of that. And you know what? We're not going to do this yet because we're just running out of guns all the time. So let's go, go and do that. There you go. And some days left. Pavel Batov. What a, what a loser. At least in this campaign. Our debt is slowly increasing, which I don't like. But that's all right. And all right. So with this... 30 days, so we're not going to be able to do this then. So, I'll see you in just a little bit. And here we are at with Operation Nightfall. Nikolai peered out of the compound through a sniper scope, the Grey Tentament, appearing bulbous and discombobulated around the edges. Its facade might as well be Mashapatov's tombstone. The Black League had tracked insurgent to his corner, where he can no longer escape. Still, it appeared magnificent. The sandbags on every window, machine guns polished to glinting in the early morning sun. Pavel. Pavel Batov had chosen to not go with a whimper, but a statement. Nikolai liked it like that, even if the marshal was a traitor to the motherland. Cracking on the radio, Nikolai took took and lit his final cigarette before the operation began. To steady his hands, he stated to his superiors. Optimally, he would also requested a can of coffee beans and a reclining chair, but he just digressed. He was growing sarcastic of the proceedings in the league. At least it was good pay and good food that they paid high rates for snipers both against them and with them. In the distance, a faint explosion boomed throughout the air, its reverberance barely halting before a whistle whistling sound. Then, in an earth-shattering boom, Black League troops dressed in camouflage took this as their signal. In waves and waves, they advanced against the Great Tomb as machine guns turned their lambent gaze to perforate their bodies with lead. More mortar shells, more troops, more guns, until the rapid gunfire halted or replaced with sporadic, pa pa pathetic pops. Batov stepped out from the back side of the building, alone, unguarded. He was Nikolai's core, the former marshal of the West Siberian military district. With one press of a trigger, he let loose a bullet that would nail Batov in the shoulder. The three Black League troops followed him, but he quickly pu pulled his trusty Tokarev up and shot, shot, shot. It all happened too quickly for Nikolai to follow, but when he set to finish the marshal off, he halted. He saw Batov crawl over the concrete pavement, a single hand scalping a gravity-less cliff, blood trailing behind him. Soon he would stop and his head would sag. He was dead. Uh, we're, and where the enemies end, and... Like, I basically restarted where we started today's episode, and focus a little bit more on stability, we'll say. A little bit more stability. And we finally put down his bandits, which finally happened. We have actually quite a bit more debt now, too. But the daughter's end. 
Yelena Karabesheva was not a woman of weak convictions. The daughter of the legendary Black League leader Dmitry Karabeshev, she had gone through the entirety of her childhood under her father's vision, which now she embraced. If only he were still here, she thought to herself, as her loyalists and remnants of the Batov's men sped into her sped in sped her into the nearest car bound for West Russia. Perhaps they would not be in so much trouble. She remembered how he was in his final days, mind addled with disappointment, and yet body inhabited by a cold, mysterious sickness. Yelena left him not long after. They brought her to an open topped military car, ready for a perusal. Perhaps out there in the West she can find refuge and bring news of the Madman Zyazov's plans. The Black League had betrayed her own father's beliefs. She did not want to rule nor take power. She only wanted or saw what love had power, not now only hate ruled. Seated at the back of the car, she had saw the buildings and tenements of the small town about to return. Then a chauffeur turned the engines on and pressed the gas pedal. The car did not roar or lie, instead only a click and ticking. Before she could warn and get out of it, as she was consumed by the flames in the inferno, yet another enemy of the state eliminated. Actually, if I remember reading about her, like, I was reading Dmitry Karabashev's, uh, you know, Wikipedia page or, you know, bio. I think, was she, like, an economist? Like, some of Karabashev's offspring, children, became economists and stuff like that, so she might have been. Or maybe she was a military engineer. Maybe she was one of those. Oh, that, they're gone. Thank God. God, this was a pain in the butt. Like, you don't know when you need that political power that you saved up earlier. I thought spending it earlier for Yazov's, you know, um, you know, descent or reign early on was the thing that you needed. But no, you need to save it for later. Go figure. A sense of closure, or... He was all stared at the dossier. It was thin, as all files belonging to enemies of the Black League. The Black Hand knew the bare minimum necessary for strategic action, or they had already brought an abrupt end to the careers. In any case, there was little need to maintain extended correspondence. Most of the time, the dossiers were also anonymous. Why pretend these people mattered more than purely operational capacities? Not this folder, however. This one was earmarked by Yazov himself, and the days since he'd authorized offensive action against his subjects, he'd come again and again to its pages. How could he not? The dossier belonged to the daughter of the greatest influence. His greatest influence. His second father, his enemy, and now an anonymous corpse officially buried in an anonymous grave. He flicked over the pages, poring over the details where it had gone wrong. Surely there had been some imagined slight, some magnificent transgression that swallowed them both, broke father from child. There had to be. What happened to them? If things had gone differently, would Karbysheva now be sitting in Yozov's place, fighting for the iron dream of Russia born anew? And how best to honor a daughter who had died fighting her father's greatest dream? Yozov had never found the answer to that satisfactory. So he had come up with his own as he grasped the pages of the dossier and prayed that he'd done the right thing. That night, the government of Omsk announced a plan renewal of the Founders' Memorial and the city center. Repairs took a day to complete in a coffin. With the dossier placed atop of it, made its way to the memorial. No one took notice, and if it did not emerge come this morning, when the memorial was resealed, there was a nary peep. There was nary a peep. I do this for you, General. I do this for you, and we are still continuing on. I've done exactly the same focuses as I did off screen, so. It is what it is. Uh, agriculture and poverty Ooh, societal rate. Oh, I like that. Uh, as much as I want civilian military factories, optimize agricultural output. Despite our intense focus on industrializing our nation, millions of our people do not work in industrial fields. We cannot forget that Russians gr who grow our field or food, who raise our beasts of burden and form the bedrock that modern society is built upon while we are bringing the nation's factories into the modern age, we must do the same for its farms. Large private farms concentrate too much power in the owner's hands while small family farms are inefficient. Both must be abolished and replaced with a new system of state-owned work sites where agricultural cadres can grow the crops and raise the livestock that will feed their fellow Russians. State ownership will also make it easier to implement new technologies and techniques that define modern agriculture. Gone into the days of wheelbarrows and hand tools, it is time our farms met tractors and chemical fertilizers. Which will be a great, great thing. Uh, hopefully, we can, do we need to keep this political power? I hope we don't have to. So, and we're, oh, look at that, 62%, not bad. Uh, did that get better, actually? Hold on, because when it left, it was like 75%. These are medium taxation, civilian budget boost, of course. Ah, oh, the new SIB plan helped us out. Plus 10%, of course, did help out, which is kind of nice. Ah, uh, the new SIB plan. But after that, we're going to go ahead and do uh, militarized railway systems, because I like infrastructure. Moving troops and supplies around a vast nation requires an extensive network of uh, railways. Luckily, Western Siberia has a comprehensive rail system that was maintained even through the German bombings. Unfortunately, it's often clogged and trains are often delayed for hours or even days. It is not uncommon for many trains to be vying for space on the tracks, and certain routes are becoming infamous for the backlogs they involve. This cannot be allowed to continue. We will give the military the responsibility to schedule our nation's trains. This will greatly increase the speed of transporting men and equipment to where we need them at the expense of our civilian population's needs. For the moment, this is a sacrifice we must make. The military of the Black League is only is the vanguard of the new Russia and our only chance for salvation. Everything must serve them, for only they can deliver the justice and salvation that we do need. Alright, let's take a look at this. Regional developments. Oh, I guess we're doing uh, nas revitalized national service programs. Not bad, not bad. And army professionalism. I want more poverty relief. Oh, I definitely want more poverty, poverty, poverty relief. And we have 22 divisions, which is pretty nice. Uh, actually, you guys, you two are the only ones that are still 12 combat with. Let's get rid of you guys. 
Actually, no, I didn't. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Keep training. We need you to train, 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 train. And we do have quite a bit of depth now, which kind of sucks. Which actually really, really does suck. But that's just because we have probably more military costs, right? Yeah, 2.3, basically 2.4 billion. Oof. France sides with Germany. All right. Exert influence in the Urals. Mm, the race for the Urals, huh? Well, I don't want to do that yet. We only have 22 divisions. I'm going to do that later. I mean, we have a bigger air force now. So the bigger um, 22 divisions. I don't want to do that yet. I want to save time. So, Project Commodore, academic base, GDP stuff, national readout will be unlocked, black budget, total industrial nationalization. The Black League has already assumed control of vital industries like weapon reproduction and infrastructure construction to make sure that they serve the needs of the state. But other industries, as well as local businesses, continue to work independently of our government. We will put an end to this. We cannot tolerate any industry outside of our control. Left to their own devices, industrialists prefer to cater to decadent consumers producing unnecessary luxuries that will be of, of no use to us. We must seize their factories and the workshops so that they can begin producing the items that we need in our coming struggles. We will allow owners who are compliant to remain as supervisors of the factories. Their experience will be of much use to us. Those who choose not to do their patriotic duty will of course be dealt with as deemed necessary. Their industry is necessary to our success. They are not. Everything has a cost. And let's see. We, oh, I think we did motorize off screen or not before I fade in, fade out. Not looking too bad. Of course, I we could make better guns. I want to get us out of our deficit first because we're making 31 guns a day, which is pretty darn good. Better army professionalism. This happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about it, please go right ahead. Excellent, though. Very, very. Oh. We actually get more political power because of this. Oh. Finally. Things are finally looking up a little better for us. After this, we shall do expand. Oh, independence for the UAE. Whatever. Better tools, equipment. Yeah, let's go do this one. Modern industry is a complicated matter. It requires more than lots of workers on an assembly line to produce or build an armored vehicle, armored infantry vehicle, or a jet plane. It requires advanced machinery and tools, both rarities throughout Russia. Though we managed to create some of the machines on our own and captured a few more in our reclamation of Western Siberia, it's not enough to meet our needs. Our engineers are in the process of reverse engineering the simpler examples of these tools, such as handheld wielding torches and power drills so we can begin producing them domestically. Other items like robotic assembly arms and automated assembly lines will be needed to import it, to be imported for now, as they're too complex for it to produce, but once we have the industry to support them, these two will be disassembled and examined. Soon Russia will have a thriving modern industrial base and we will not be reliant on outsiders to sell our tools to us. For decades, Russia will fail to modernize its industry and our enemies took advantage of that. We will not, they will not find us so unprepared, which would be a great, great thing. Can we do anything else here? Uh, invest in construction, uh, we could 15%, I kind of like the way it is, I want to save my political power up. And expand the industrial cadres. The Black League is no longer confined to a single city and surroundings. We now control a huge swath of territory and the people that live on it. As a natural result of our expansion, the population of our state has increased almost tenfold in mere months. This influx of new people has put a severe strain on our society, especially the system of cadres. Millions of new citizens await assignment to a cadre that now to determine or decide how they will serve Russia and the League. But until they are assigned, they exist in a sort of a limbo, uncertain of what to do or what not comes next. Minister Petrovinov has recommended that we prioritize assigning these new workers to the industrial cadres, at least in the short term. With a massive expansion of our industrial base, many of the existing cadres have been stretched thin or are working overtime to keep the factories running. An influx of fresh workers into the sector would both increase our productivity and greatly reduce the number of cadres, less citizens. And if their labor could be more than useful somewhere else in the future, there's nothing stopping from the League from simply reassigning them. The Red Twilight, that's the fall of London. Actually, no, the Red Twilight, this happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about the Red Twilight, please go right ahead. This happens, like, literally every campaign, so it's almost, like, January 1st-ish, 1968, so... It is what it is, better tools. Oh, yes. Now, pay attention, do you see this? You must measure this part carefully off the design you've been given. Then, make a rough cut, slowly now, measure twice, cut once, retake the measurement, here, take this, now just... Carefully, once you have cut it down, begin to hollow out the barrel. The first team of ten were assembled around the lath, or lathe, watching carefully as they were attended, as they were attended to his trade. It was barely possible to hear him over the din of other machinery. You must be able to do this within acceptable tolerances. This will vary greatly. Make sure to look at the design, or your work will be useless. All ten watched carefully as it continued with the lesson until a serviceable barrel was made and put back on the rack. Next, it would go for rifling and then assembly. Now, do you understand everything you've been told? The team looked at each other with varying degrees of confidence. Yes, comrade. How's the budget? Wow, a billion in deficit already. Wow. We're looking better here. That's I'm a little pleased with that, actually. Any more decisions? Excuse me. Um, the, uh, this one. Army professionalism. That's the way to go. 23 divisions. We have enough guns now. We don't have enough artillery, which... We can do this now. Yeah, we're going to need more artillery. Uh, Plane-wise, we're actually looking not too bad. And we also trained some more planes as well, which is very good. 
Um, yeah, but we definitely need a few more planes here and there. After this, new urban development stuff? Sure. Every city has the potential to become a stronghold against the enemy. Without much preparation, they can become concrete mazes that an attacker must clear block by block to secure. The cities of the Black League are no different, but for our generals, I see room for improvement. By rebuilding destroyed urban centers along strict, carefully planned guidelines, the cities can be made vastly more efficient in many areas. Shopping districts can be remade into housing projects, churches into command centers, and city squares into labor yards. By reorganizing the urban landscapes of our state, we can also turn the cities into massive fortresses. Narrow streets will be make moving through the city difficult and can be easily transformed into choke points at a moment's notice. Each city will have a detailed plan outlining several layers of prepared defenses. Should the League come under attack, the invaders will regret the day they decide to fight on our terms. Very good. New cadres. The officer looked over the roster of the cadre 1602981. It was always difficult to actually fill out the 80 people required, and now is it worse than ever. Luckily, a new batch had come in. He didn't really care where they came from anymore, so as long as they were able to... And able enough and willing to work hard. All those not currently assigned to Codger 602981, please step forward. All those not currently assigned, uh, 32 people were counted. Most of the young boys barely out of their youth cadre, but they would do. They never really seemed to, too eager about being on an industrial line making tools with guns or clothes, but it was always hard to tell what the reason was for this. Some were afraid of battle, understandably so. Those were the small, pinched faces he saw staring up at him. But others were furious at missing the opportunity to do what they not viewed as their nation's most honored duty. These were the angled brows, the staring eyes, and the clenched jaws. Within a solid rook, who knows what might actually happen? An infantry command cadre in time, but for now they would serve their nation in the rapidly expanding industrial cadres that would bring Omsk to parity with its neighbors, and eventually the whole of Russia. Soldiers in many uniforms, my friends. And next research will be done in about a month, which is fine. Boundaries of War? Or this one? I'll see this one. The Resource Consolidation Commission. Siberia is thought of by many as a barren land devoid of life or value. There is no denying that much of Siberia is sparsely populated, but the only the un uninformed and foolish could say this land is worthless. Siberia is filled with valuable resources that can be of great use to anyone who can claim them, from iron to oil. There are bounties of materials that could aid our mission literally beneath our feet. All we need to do is take them. Unfortunately, that is where the difficulties arise. The various warlords who once controlled these resources were not exactly efficient in charting or extracting them, and things have not improved since we took charge. To amend the situation, Petrovinov has recommended we create a sub subdivision of the State Department Directorate, the Resource Consolidation Commission. This commission will be charged with centralizing and streamlining resources harvesting within our state. Under their watch, the oil will flow consistently. The steel mills will meet the quotas, and no more resource deposits will linger in the earth unexploited. If you'd like to read about better agriculture methods, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign since we focus on it, so here we are. For this bread, we thank thee. And cadre redesignation. Rural cadre number 3056, you've been selected by lottery for redesignation as an urban cadre. Congratulations. New residencies have been prepared for you in downtown Tiumen. Resistance will be treated as treason. Said a dead eyed leaguesman to the frightened villagers. The military transport behind him sputtered in anticipation of carrying the villagers off. What's a cadre? asked the slack jaw local. Resistance will be treated as treason, clarified the soldier. Will we be coming back? whimpered a little girl. Oddly, the leaguesman seemed to soften upon hearing the child's voice and he knelt down to speak with her. Resistance will be treated as treason, he said, reassuringly, before a your hair and standing back up. You have three hours to gather your belongings and board the truck. Failure to return at that time will be considered as resistance. And resistance resistance will be treated as treason, groaned several villagers in unison. What a lucky cadre. How great. So, oh, 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 look at that. Nice. So, actually, we've been making more divisions, which is great. These aren't great divisions, but I'm hoping that by doing this... Actually, I'm going to actually have you guys do this, then. You guys come up there. And I know this video is uh, a little bit longer than what I normally do, but that's just because I want to get through the economy stuff for this episode, so. Okay, so you already have this set up. That's good. Alright, so you guys are doing that. You're going to train. I'm actually going to I'm gonna just do this as well. So, one. Boom. There. There. The fighters are the ones giving me problems right now because they don't have enough. Nice. Ah, good. And let's do that too. Why not? Oh, actually, how's, how's building coming along? Never enough building. After that, boundaries of war. In matters of war, there's no such thing as over-preparation. Our army spent years fighting tooth and nail, often making do with even out the most basic of supplies. The struggle will strengthen the soldiers of the League, but it'll take some more than good fighting spirit to destroy the Germans. It'll take guns, millions of them. It'll take tanks, planes, and bombs, and missiles, and radios, and shovels, and countless other items that an army needs to fight a modern war. We cannot grow complacent in the militarization of our industry. Even as more factories are open and our economy starts to develop, we must remember that is not enough. Across our territory, more land will be cleared. New foundries and plants will be opened, producing anything and everything that might be of use in the battles ahead. The factories will run all hours of the day, never ceasing production for even a second. Weapon depots will be filled and backup depots and emergency backup depots because there's no such thing as over-preparation. Wow. National debt will rise sharply. Well, it already kind of is, but whatever. Uh, after that, we probably want to go and do this too. 
Oh, if I can click on it. There you go. Cool. Founders of Warp. And what have, oh, we got anything else here? Yeah, why not? Encouraging turning peoples. Agricultural heavy machinery. Even more equipment. Yes. That'd be nice. We'll read Founders of War and do another one, and then read the event from that. And maybe all Education League. Russian National Army. I should have probably done some of this too, but whatever. Eh, mostly just blueprints, actually. So, Project Chimera. Our increased investment in research initiatives is already bearing fruit. The Sverdlov Design Bureau has quickly become a center of military innovation and experimentation, producing new prototypes of every type of equipment, from bullet casings to tanks. The experimentation has not been restricted to conventional or even legal weapons either. Deep within the Bureau's most secure laboratories, weapons that will guarantee our triumph in the Great Trial are being tested. Mustard gas, rice, and cyanide, and other chemical agents are being developed by our scientists for both use on and off the battlefield. Project Khmer, the creation of our chemical weapon stockpile, is highly classified. Only a select few in the Black League know of its existence. If the outside world discovered the weapons or the plans for their use, they will certainly condemn us as monsters. We have no time for their hypocritical moralizing, though. All that matters is avenging the motherland, and we will make use of every tool available to make sure justice is completed and done. Almost two billion in debt. Wow. Yeah, screw it. We're going to do this anyways. Exert influence. The race for the Earls. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, just, uh, this happens pretty much every time we play as either a West Siberian nation or even a you know European-Russian part of the nation. So, a new theater... The race of the heroes is upon us. We will triumph over West Russian rivals and integrate another part of Shadow Russia to our growing nation. Uh, actually, let's take a look at these guys. How are these guys doing now? They actually have fewer men than us. Uh, that's kind of reassuring, actually. Um, hmm. Maybe their intervention might not be a bad idea. Hmm. Oh, actually, 51 political power. Uh, agriculture. Uh, no. Weekly manpower. Eh. I think we're kind of capped at 41%, which kind of sucks, so... Project Cometa and the Black Budget. We must do whatever we can to close the technology gap between our state and the rest of the world. A final struggle is drawing near and a technological advantage it could prove decisive. Our scientists will have all the funds they could have asked, ever asked for. Every resource will be granted at the request. The fate of the nation is on the line. We cannot afford to lose Russia over again something as trivial as research constraints. The scientists of the Black League will have no restrictions on their research, either material or ethical. We shall allow anything if it has a chance of strengthening our cause. To keep track of resource requests and consumption during the testing and experimentation, a separate confidential budget will have to be created. This Black Budget will function as a log of items we have diverted from other areas to priority research. This includes weapons requiring stress testing, tanks with flawed armor designs, even prisoners who would otherwise join the Redemptionary Brigade that will be instead be earning the redemption at task subjects. The scientists will have, make, will have everything we can offer them. Their budget will make sure that they do not waste it. I'm going kind to of intend to go to war right now, actually. Uh, let's make sure we get some better planes, too. I'm actually really tempted to go to war. How close are we with these other divisions? You know what? Let's wait to get four more divisions, and then we'll push out, because we're actually out of guns. Actually, we have a... Okay, amount of artillery too. Uh, that's a case. Let's go do this because once we start capturing more places, that'll be good for us. I'm not gonna lower artillery. I don't want to lower any of this really. Main battle tanks. Don't really want to lower that though. Launch military interventions. We're waiting for four more divisions to be made. Good. Black budget. Project Khmer. Funding. Sufficient. Funding is proposed under the current budget should be enough to establish operations and begin small-scale production with little modification. Large-scale production might necessi necessitate considerably larger committees or commitments in the future. Facilities under construction. The construction of adequate research facilities has proven challenging while maintaining the required level of secrecy but are now un well underway. Attaining necessary production capabilities might necessitate appropriation of significant industrial assets from other operations. Steps to pre-approve these appropriations are strongly recommended. Recruitment. Sufficient. Appointed leadership is motivated and prepared. List of suited personnel. Now contain enough candidates with needed skills and characteristics for acquisition to begin. The use of coercive measures to ensure full cooperation from staff is expected to be necessary and pre-approved. Project is ready for initialization, pending and final approval. Approved. CC of victory in Canada. In all league education. There's no greater victim of the Germans' atrocities than the children of our nation. The bombings robbed them of their childhood, and the destruction of Ru Russia robbed them of the future. They have nothing left to look forward to but the, but the possibility of revenge on those who have taken everything from them. The Glove Kovark himself has taken a special concern for the children of the League. He sees the potential within them. The potential to become the next generation of all Russian leaders and soldiers. He will not allow this potential to be wasted. A new nationwide education system is being planned, centered around a curriculum designed to prepare children as young as five to serve the League in any capacity they can. This will not be an education of useless academics, but a practical skill. Children will learn how to work in the uh, parents' cadres. They will learn that if called upon, they must be able to fight and willing to die for Russia and the League. We expect no more from them as we do from any other citizens. Nice. Academic base goes up, minimizing liability. It all started small. One of his subordinates alerted him to the high spending being directed towards land survey and related activities in the spring budget. 
Constantine had wanted to make sure that his bureau was getting value for the money and decided to investigate what they needed a land survey for. Navigating the complex web of bureaucracy had only become more difficult under the management of the Black League, but Constantine had applied the same single-track determination to this task that all had seen him rise rapidly through the ranks since their takeover. While he turned up several other instances of high sums directed towards land survey and related activities, he could never seem to track down where the money went. In the end, he had called in a favor with his brother-in-law, the State Department Director, to get a physical address. Now he had had it safely written down. Maybe he'd finally get to the bottom of things. The morning after Constantine's visit to the director, there was a strange man in his bedroom when he woke up. <laughs> oh my gosh. As Constantine scrabbled to get make sense of the situation, the intruder politely invited him to get dressed and join him for breakfast. Please have some tea, the man began, as Constantine sat down opposite of him. Constantine Alexandrovich, by all accounts a great servant to Russia and the Black League, he continued, it would be a loss for everyone if something was to happen to you. It's a dangerous job hunting addresses. Get, get, going back to your office might be better for your health. It's it's a nice office. Yeah, yeah. Research facilities, look at that. Nine, wow. That's pretty strong. Uh, invest in construction. I want to launch military operations, but we're still 26. Hmm. Oh, look, that's so good. Oh, we have nothing else here? Something else here? We have one, two, three. Oh, uh. Oh, I don't think we can get any more. I think we'll capture 20% war support, too. No health care. Well, yeah, that might be a slight problem. But, you know, the National Readout Program would be probably good to read about. A true reality haunts the Black League's government. Those who know about the most preparation for the Great Trial know that it will most likely not be a war of reclamation, but a final act of vengeance. The German enemy has more than enough nuclear weapons to destroy the world, and there's little doubt or little question that they would rather drag Earth to heck with them than let us bring justice without retribution. If Russia and the League, League are to have any hope of survival, we must be ready for the last cowardly act of self-destruction. Across the nation, we will build a system of complex bunkers and shelters based on the designs of those in Omsk. Pre-existing fortification complexes and metro systems will be reinforced and stocked with supplies to serve as emergency shelters. New, purpose-built shelters will be built in the largest cities of the nation, designed to hold as many people as possible. If the day comes when the enemy decides they would rather destroy the world than face the consequences of their choices, the Black League will shelter in the Earth. When the fires have burned out, we will emerge and teach them that they can not escape so easily. All right, so down here we're gonna go and grab. Uh, let's see, still twenty six. Education, returning expatriates, initiates. Uh, I kind of want to do this one. I like more equipment. Let's, let's save up for that one. How about that? Basic trucks, nice. Let's get some better equipment then. More land out of tech would be great. And we'll finish with one more focus, and then probably read the effects of uh, this. Maybe uh, our image abroad. Well, oop, military austerity. Let's go do that one first for this longer video. Spend, cut, good. Wow, almost a billion in debt, Jesus. The national, Russian National Army. All well, the local obstacles dispensed with, now we now possess the manpower and issue to transform our current forces into a true standing army worthy of Russia. The cadres and redemptory brigades must have the training, equipment, and oversight they need to become capable of facing anything the warlords of Russia can muster and the Germans in time. The Russian National Army will come to surpass the Russian armies of old in every way imaginable. Ours will be no mere militia defense force, it will be a legion without number. When the Great Trial comes and the steeps of force of Russia will echo the march of 10 million boots in Germany's ruins. The League's youth. And Andre loved school. His teacher pushed him hard, he knew, but that was important if he was going to help ensure national survival. Every person living within the League's territory, even those as young as him, needed to learn, needed to prepare, if the great trials to overcome. And Andre intended with every fire of his being to be ready. In between his ordinary classes on language, mathematics, and the like, he received instruction on the principles of his League. In the morning, he learned about the visionary foresight of General Karbyshev and his preparation for the first national programs of his action. In the afternoon, he learned about how he could better shape himself to help with ever increasing effectiveness. The purification, reclamation, and vengeance inherited to the other programs. Every day, once more closer to the great trial, he learned more, understood more, and became more prepared. He had even begun applying his lessons outside of school, watching carefully for evidence of revisionism or an insufficient dedication. He had already identified several such individuals and thought, and though he could not, of course, be sure what happened after his reports, at least two had so far not been since, and deservedly so. Andre intended to protect himself, his family, people, and the Black League, and he would not be deterred from any course of action that would advance any of those goals. And that was what his teachers had taught him, and Andre very much loved school. To overcome the Great Trial, loyalty must be ensured from an early age. If you'd like to be read about industrial expertise, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign. That's always good to have better industrial expertise, right? Ah, oh, good. Early motorized, not bad. And more research is always a good thing to have on hand. Military factories, we might as well start doing that as well. Yeah, we want to save up, and the National Redout Program, uh, Russian National Army, and get more army XP as well. Cool, and do we have any sort of event? Oh, what do we have here? Assemble Redout System in Svodlovsk. Anti-air radar stations, wow. Uh, we will do this eventually. I would, like like I said, I want to save up for stuff, so. Oh, we have two more done. We got two more divisions ready. I want two more before we go to war. And at 75, how many do you get today? 0.7, I want to do prioritized military industrial complex stuff. Yeah. 
And here we go. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. My apologies for messing up earlier, but you know what? Sometimes you got to restart and go back from the beginning to correct your mistakes. Regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will go to war with the West Russian Revolutionary Front and have a good time. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.